I am doing two videos today because I want to talk about Saint Gaming, which is the team in the LPL I am most excited about for very, very wrong reasons. Look at their roster. So their roster is Acorn, top. They have three junglers because as I said in the video I released on Grip Stage, why the fuck? not have three junglers when jungler is the best role in China right now and you don't really have other people to fill the position. They have Chimin, March, and Captain who are all junglers who have done pretty well in terms of being low tier and or had some success in the LSPL. So I, I felt like whether they were running Chimin or March, High Breathe Gaming's best jung position was their jungler. So that was kind of the, the entire issue with the team, is that they replaced their best player, and it was still their best player. <laughs> so I don't really... Yeah, it doesn't matter. The mid lane, they have Snoopy and Otto, formerly known as Jankun. Um, bottom lane, they have SDYZ and XQ, and they have a su one support who's Xiao. And I actually think Xiao is... is is, is good, so Xiao is decent, so it's it doesn't matter. Like, Acorn and Xiao are probably, like, pretty good, so it's fine if they don't have subs. <sighs> Ooh, this is very, this is really fun. And their coach is If. We'll get to If later. The reason why I want to refer to this team as uh, Saint Meme Gaming is because there are so many really cool slash really ridiculous storylines going into this. The first is that I feel like certain teams and the LPL succeed based on a single leadership-based figure. I'm not sure if he can do it or not, but I feel like Acorn has the right sort of demeanor and personality to be this kind of player, where he's going into a team with a bunch of players who are have varying levels of experience, a lot of them are young. Um, they could deal with someone who can teach them more about the game and the way minion flows work. A lot of the Samsung Blue success in terms of their ability to manipulate minions has actually been attributed to Acorn. Um, Acorn has a good personality, um, very stable, has a lot of patience, so I think that this is, he's very team oriented as a player, so I think that this is the potential where you could have a situation where you have a core leader figure. Like Edward Gaming success and Royal Never Give Up success, I feel like you can attribute a lot of those to a core leadership figure. Edward Gaming, it's Clear Love, and Royal Never Give Up right now, it's Mata. So uh, I feel like Acorn could potentially be that kind of player. Of course, I have no idea what he's like in comps or anything like this, so this is all pure speculation. But this is, this is sort of interesting to me. His backstory is obviously... <laughs> LGD. It's kind of funny because Hyper Youth Gaming is kind of like the the pool that LGD send their rejects to because you have um, <laughs> STYZ who used to play on LGD, right? You have XQ who used to play on LGD, and you also have uh, SS17 who used to play on LGD, who's no longer on this team, but he was on this team last year. He was on when they were on last split when they were Hyper Youth Gaming. So to me, it's just kind of funny that this is the the grave for LGD players. Uh, PYL will end up here probably next year. You know, uh, when his contract is up. <laughs> God, this is so depressing. <laughs> the next uh, Chimin and March uh, captain. So. March and Captain are both pretty known LSPL junglers. I feel like March was on Cake's Happy Captain, was replaced when he was on Energy Base Maker. He played a couple of LS LPL games, but these, I mean, there's really not a lot I can say about the jungle pool. It's kind of funny to see Captain again because Razzle Possum, if you know him, was a huge Captain fan. I don't know if he'll see any playtime. Personally, I would go with the Acorn Chimin roster and use Auto mid instead of Snoopy, but we'll see what they decide to go with to start. Mid lane, we have Snoopy, who's from Edward Gaming, and of course this uh, Edward Gaming organization, of course he played on EDE, he was a rookie Korean player. So this is funny in the context of everything that I'm about to lay out because... I mean, we'll get to it. Otto, Tiangun. Now, Tiangun is one of my favorite 
uh, people in Chinese esports just because he's so ridiculous. Uh, Tiankun used to play top lane for Young Glory uh, when they were in the LSPL when they were in the LPL in 2013 summer, and he was the first really to play Shivana at top before it became this really big sensation later on. And he was really good, actually. Like, a lot of people sort of said 1v1 top laners, you know, there aren't a lot in China. And so once that existed, got a lot of recognition. Um, it was kind of like him going in PDT at the time. Following 2013 summer, Jiankun and Young Glory were relegated. They went to LSPL. Jiankun eventually went to the mid lane. Uh, Jiankun as a mid laner is like UZI only on crack because he just tries to int into everything and usually it works well a lot of times it works it makes him look really good so he was he had a ridiculously high kill participation on uh, young glory but also he had the most deaths of any player in the lpl in 2014 summer so even though he looked really good and he did a ridiculous amount of damage and he played like Dagar famously into cool's tf and wrecked him repeatedly uh, <laughs> Jankun is the player who is super talented, and everyone can tell he's super talented, but he is not driven. He has repeatedly said, I don't really want to work hard, my team sucks, I can't carry them. On stream to Wang Sa Song, I used to watch his stream. Uh, sometimes he would just like be playing mid with one hand and he'd be ordering Chinese food or he'd be smoking or something like this and just destroying people. It's like you could tell this guy had potential and he was talented. I don't know if he'll actually play. So I say I say somewhat tentatively that they should play Dian Gun because he has more talent than Snoopy, I think. But it's very tentative because if Dian Gun can't be molded, if he can't be worked with or reasoned with, there's really no reason to play. I just want him to play for the memes, for the jokes, for the, uh, gosh, when we did the LPL English cast, we used to, to constantly just talk about, oh gosh, he's going in again on Yasu. oh gosh, how did he get that pentagon? Why is he dead again? Um, <laughs> Tengrun was so fun to watch. Uh, he's auto now, he used to be auto earlier, originally on Young Glory, he changed his name to Tengrun, went Tengrun, now he's auto again. Mmm... So that's Jim Gun. <laughs> uh, the the bottom line we have SCYZ and XQ, both are X80 carries of LGD Gaming, who are either made to look good by VUIL or actually just lost focus and weren't able to look good again without PYL. STYZ was banned <laughs> briefly for uh, trying to get away from LGD. This is a trend. Like, Chinese players trying to get away from LGD seems to be a trend. He was banned for roster tampering, basically, and constantly trying to take higher offers from Akfun. But LGD really wanted him to be able to get on a good team, so they only shortened the ban to half of a year. Then he went to WE, and so many people made jokes about him. Uh, he did less damage than Aluka on average which Aluka was constantly playing tanks and Scion, so this was really distressing. Uh, mid lane was replaced by... Mid lane was replaced by Shia. He was replaced by Mystic, and I think most of the motivation was, for this was to put Mystic on the team and not to rep necessarily replace uh, Ninja with Shia. So, for me, STYZ is someone I look at as... Uh, XQ was a very clear carry of... Hyper Youth Gaming, when he played Callista, he did really well. When he played these Hyper Carries, he did really well. But he had a lot to be desired, especially in laning phase. So this is this is another issue with him. Uh, Xiao uh, is a very... I don't know. I think he's, he's underrated. People don't talk about him in the context of LPL supports. Like, I think LPL supports and LPL junglers are actually pretty good right now are the best roles, which is really counterintuitive because people think of all these, like, star class level AD carries and whatnot. But to me, it's, like, these supportive type players who are doing really well in the LPL at the moment. 
and this is the the kind of stuff that you want to see develop the problem is is that you have these mechanically d talented supports and junglers but not necessarily sophisticated strategies so the play style doesn't really enhance or put these sort of skills on display or make them apparent finally you have the coach who is if so the funny thing about if okay is that a lot of people know the story of how uh, Coach Aaron, Edward Gaming's coach, got into esports. He first coached or was an analyst for Team WE. He got this position because he first applied and they turned down his application. Following that, uh, his sister messaged the team support if to go out on some kind of date or just to start flirting. They just started flirting for a while and eventually the girl or Aaron's sister asked him to go out with her and if, I don't know if what it was if he thought that the sister came off as mannish or it was weird that he'd never really seen a good picture of her, of her or what but he turned her down uh, later she left several social media suicide notes and allegedly killed herself Aaron played the very uh, grief-stricken brother type role and if ended up uh, recommending him to we to get an analyst position because he felt bad shortly thereafter if was benched and uh, ccf and clear came on and you have the legendary we team that is still legendary is still considered the best chinese team uh, in the the history of league of legends so uh it came out later that Aaron never had a sister and that it was all him making these social media accounts and everything else. So if spent a little bit in limbo looking for a position, eventually switched to Smite, and now is coming back to coach the Sync Gaming team. I just, I want, because now we have coaches on stage, so I want to see if and Aaron shake hands. Like, can you, can you let Aaron come on stage, be the on-stage coach for the games against Saint. It, it's just so delicious. Like, I just, I want to give them shaking hands and make a various captions of, uh, I mean, just like, oh, I wrecked you like you wrecked my, I don't know, like you wrecked my sister. I don't know, this is so bad. I can't even come up with a good one. It's so bad. Um, yeah, so Saint meme gaming. Uh, in the context, having Snoopy on the team is also funny. You have a bunch of XWE players, right? You have SCYC who was on WE, um, Snoopy who is on Edward Gaming. People online have started calling this the Avenger team because Tiangun, STYZ, Captain, all these players are just coming back out of nowhere after they're getting benched or replaced or just can't find a place. And it's just, this team makes me laugh really hard. Like, it's also Revenge Against LGD, Revenge Against EDG, Revenge Against WE. You could make so many funny storylines with this team. Do I think they'll do well? No, I really don't think they'll do well. I think they could. I think if they do, it depends a lot on Acorn and the type of player he can be. Because I think one type of player is setting the right environment and having leadership and experience can really, really influence a Chinese team a lot and more so than in a lot of other leagues so this is my hope for uh, saint but I, I don't expect them to do well despite the fact that they've had like a lot of flash in the pan kind of talents uh, a lot of big names but i just thought it would be it was worth it to make a short video about saints and to talk about why i think they're interesting <laughs> it totally yeah it doesn't matter the Mid lane, they have Snoopy and Otto, formerly known as Tiankun. Um, bottom lane, they have SDYZ and XQ, and they have a su one support who's Xiao. And I actually think Xiao is, is 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 good, so Xiao is decent, so it's it doesn't matter. Like Acorn and Xiao are probably like pretty good, so it's fine if they don't have subs. If he can do it or not, but I feel like Acorn has the right sort of demeanor personality to be this kind of player 
where he's going into a team with a bunch of players who are have varying levels of experience. A lot of them are young. Um, they could deal with someone who can teach them more about the game and the way minion flows work. A lot of the Samsung Blue success in terms of their ability to manipulate minions has actually been attributed to Acorn. Um, Acorn has a good pull to fill the position. They have Chimin, March, and Captain, who are all junglers who have done pretty well in terms of being low tier and or had some success in the LSPL. So I, I felt like whether they were running Chimin or March, High Breathe Gaming's best jung position was their jungler. So that was kind of the, the entire issue with the team is that they replaced their best player and it was still their best player. <laughs> So I, I am doing two videos today because I want to talk about Saint Gaming, which is the team in the LPL I am most excited about for very, very wrong reasons. Look at their roster. So their roster is Acorn, top. They have three junglers because as I said in the video I released on Grip Stage, why the fuck not have three junglers when jungler is the best role in China right now and you don't really have other people. <sighs> Ooh, this is very, this is really fun. And their coach is If. We'll get to If later. The reason why I want to refer to this team as uh, Saint Meme Gaming is because there are so many really cool slash really ridiculous storylines going into this. The first is that I feel like certain teams and the LPL succeed based on a single leadership based figure. I'm not sure 